Hi everyone! In this video we want to look at an application that involves looking at the graph, a complicated graph of an exponential function. So we have a formula right here f of t equals 10 times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative 1 fourth t. I don't know if that's very easy to see, but that's a negative 1 fourth t. And this function inputs the number of days that someone has been working in a supermarket bakery and outputs the rate at which they decorate cakes, the number of cakes per hour that they can decorate. So very first thing we're supposed to do is try and sketch a graph of f. Because this is an application, we're going to go ahead and restrict the, the domain so that we're only seeing values of t that make sense. So what I really like about this is it's actually, it's really messy. I don't want to pick points and follow them exactly through all the transformations. So that kind of forces me into this compromise where I keep track of the general shape and not so much the points. And then I can use my calculator to confirm some of the details. And I would say this is a little more realistic look at how we want to be able to use transformations later. So we want to get really good at them. We want to know how to be able to do it perfectly. But a lot of what we'll use it for is just having a really good approximate idea of what a graph looks like in our head. So that won't involve as much of the specific following point stuff. Okay, so what I can see is that I would start with y equals e to the t. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do one step here. This 10 being factored out is kind of weird. We like factoring out coefficients of our input variable, so t would be great, but it doesn't help us to factor out stuff from our y's. So I'm going to just distribute it back in. Let's see, I think I'm actually going to write it up above. Let's say f of t is equal to 10 minus e to the, oh, minus 10 e to the negative 1 fourth t. Hopefully that's readable. Okay, so I see a fair amount going on. We could even rewrite once more if it makes it easier. This is the same as negative 10 e to the negative 1 fourth t plus 10. So I see, hold on, let me sketch this first basic shape. I'm starting with exponential growth. I am going to keep track of the horizontal asymptote. That tells me a ton, so y equals zero. I see a flip over the x-axis. So this negative sign out in front is going to flip the entire graph upside down. So first thing is that it's actually, let's see if I can get it right, going like this. I'm not following any specific points, just keeping this really general idea and making sure I know exactly where the asymptote is. I also have a flip over the y-axis. So in my head, or on paper, if you're keeping track on paper like this, I now have this shape flipped across the y-axis. So it's going to start down here and then come up and cross. And again, this is just really approximate shape that I'm keeping track of. The 10 out in front is a vertical stretch. And the 1 fourth attached to the t is a horizontal stretch. So I have vertical stretch by 10 and horizontal stretch by 4. That doesn't really change this general picture I'm looking at. It just makes all the scales bigger. So it would be you know, more up here, so kind of stretched out both directions. So bigger y's and bigger x's going on. So since I haven't labeled any x or y values anyways, I'm just going to keep the same kind of idea in my head and be thinking that we have a pretty big scale going. The last thing that I think I will follow, oh, in fact, it's the last thing left. So yes, the last thing I will follow is that it's shifted up 10. So for my final graph, uh, just using this real rough idea, oops, it's very important to recognize that the horizontal asymptote will end up at y equals 10 and that the graph is coming from negative infinity and approaching that from below. So I have a pretty good idea of where to put this, but having one point somewhere over here, in fact, the y-intercept in particular, would be really nice so I know where I cross that axis. I'll do that in just a second, but I want to say, since I've already made this decision without saying why, uh, we were supposed to restrict the domain to meaningful values of t, so I am only showing quadrant 1. 
And the reason I'm only showing quadrant one is I don't expect this exponential shape to continue backwards before this person started their job. So I don't want to see negative T, which means none of this is any use to me. I also don't want to see negative cakes per hour. So none of this is any good. So I really do only want to see quadrant one. So the horizontal asymptote is good. The fact that I'm coming up from negative infinity is good. Let's go ahead and get a y-intercept to use as our starting value. You could follow your y-intercept through the transformations, but depending on what transformations you actually do, what was initially your y-intercept 0, 1 might not still be your y-intercept. I think here it actually would be, but I still want to show you an alternative. Remember, big picture, we still have this final equation. So if we really want to know the y-intercept of f of t, we could just plug in 0. Anytime you want a y-intercept, plug 0 in for your x variable. So 0 in for t here. And what will happen is we'll get negative 1 fourth times 0. So our power is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So we have a negative 10 times 1 plus 10. Negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So this thing actually goes straight through the origin. And then we know it's going to come up and level off around y equals 10. In fact, right at y equals 10 is where it's going to level off. And then again, we can double check. Once we have this general idea, we should be able to check on our calculator. But you really do need to do a little of this following on your own so that you know exactly where the y, uh, the horizontal asymptote will be. And hopefully then based on that, you can make some good judgment calls about how to set your window. If you don't set your window correctly, you either may not see anything or you may be zoomed in so far that it looks just like a straight line or you may be zoomed out so far that you don't think you're seeing anything. So you have to have a reasonable window before your graphing calculator is really a very powerful check. So I'm going to do e to the negative 1 fourth x plus 10. You don't want to try and force your calculator to do a t. It will confuse it. You always want to use the x values in this y equals as long as you're in function mode, which we are. Okay, so I would like to see a graph, and I have a pretty good idea about what y information I want to see. I would like to see y's from 0 to 10. I'm going to go ahead and put my tick mark back down to 1. So I want to see y's from 0. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit higher. I'll go ahead and go to 11 so we have a little bit of clearance at the top. For x's, x is the number of days that someone's been working in the bakery. Hmm, I'm going to look at 30 days. We'll look at the first month. You can always just make a guess on something like that and then come back in and change it. Actually, that looks great. So that's looking very similar to the shape I had. And if you'd like to double check some points on the graph, you can always just hit trace. So here we go. At 15 days, we've got 9.76 cakes per hour. And you could type in 10, hit enter. And you could check that as well. So we can absolutely check some points. But I would say it's fair to say this is a pretty good idea of what the graph should look like if we're talking about the first 30 days. So I'm just going to finish this off by labeling my axes. This was at 10. Uh, and this is cakes per hour. Okay. So once we've got a graph, I hope that answering questions is fairly easy. You might have to plug in some values. If you've checked a graph on your calculator, you can use your calculator to do that. But mostly once you've got a picture and you know what's going on, I think these should be pretty straightforward. So first question, how many cakes can a newly employed worker decorate in an hour? Okay, so this is asking me for an f of t value. And the slightly hidden info in here is this newly employed, which is implying that t should equal 0. So when you first start your job, t equals 0, how many cakes can you decorate in an hour? If you want to go back and check and plug in, you can. But we already found that this goes through 0, 0. So we know that the answer is none. Apparently, they are completely useless when they start. They do not know how to decorate any cakes, no cakes per hour. 
Part C, after eight days, how many cakes can a worker decorate in an hour? So again, this is asking us for an F of T, and it's given us a T equals eight. So we're looking for F of eight. And you can plug back into the equation, or if you've gotten a graph up on your calculator, you can do what we were doing before, hit trace, and then type in your X value. And it will give you that answer, approximate answer, which is exactly what I want. So about 8.65, says right down here, 8.6466. So about 8.65. Okay, eight days, how many cakes? So I would say we don't need a complete sentence there, but we should put some units on that. So 8.65 cakes per hour. And I do think that decimal is appropriate here. Um, I would say this is how many they can finish in an hour. So it's perfectly reasonable to say that they don't quite finish the ninth cake in their hour. So I don't have any problem with the decimal here, but you should think about that. If this was, I don't know, number of people, we might be a little alarmed about having fractional number of people. Just depends on the situation. Okay. How many cakes can a very experienced worker decorate in an hour? So what this is getting at, the very experienced, is what happens as T gets really, really big. So they've been there longer and longer and longer. What is happening to F of T? And this is actually just getting at our horizontal asymptote. So the answer here is that F of T is getting close to 10. But I want you to go ahead and make a little bit of a judgment call here. I don't want you to get too caught up on exactly what the model is saying. So the model is saying that your Y is going to get closer and closer and closer to 10, but never actually get there. And in the real situation, I would say at some point, we would just say that we've decorated all 10 cakes. So let's see if we can hit it here. Uh, after 15 days, we've got nine points, so about nine and three quarters cakes. After 20 days, 9.9 .9 cakes. After 30 days, that's the end of my graph, I'm at 9.99 .9 cakes per hour. I don't know what that 0 0.01 of a cake is. Like we you know, need an extra leaf or something like that. But I would say that at that point, we would just go ahead and say you finished 10 cakes in an hour. So 10 cakes, and I don't actually need any info here about the fact that you won't quite get to 10 cakes, because again, I would say if we're talking about cakes, that 9.99999 cakes means 10 cakes to anybody who's working at a bakery. All right, thanks for watching.